there, give your attendance, you shall be here, Kurt. So I take call off to Massachusetts. The school is now open. You may be seated. Uh, Commonwealth versus Karen Lee. Can I have counsel identify themselves for the record starting with the Commonwealth? I'm Lally for the Commonwealth. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Mr. Lally. Good morning, Your Honor. Laura McLaughlin for the Commonwealth. Good morning, Ms. McLaughlin. Good morning, Your Honor. Candace Yanetti for the Karen Good morning, Ms. Yanetti. And good morning, Your Honor. Ian Henke on behalf of Karen Reed. Attorney Jackson should be with us on this. Okay. Uh, good morning, Mr. Henke. Good morning, Mr. Jackson. And good morning, Ms. Reed. Good morning. All right. So. In court are counsel who will argue the motions for today. Uh, and uh, there's only Mr. Henchy and Ms. Yanetti. Um, when I set dates on the modified scheduling order, I set dates that were convenient to the parties in recognition of mainly defense counsel's trial schedule. And last week I renewed the Pro Hoc Vici motion. Um, but I see Mr. Jackson chose not to be here today, and so counsel will argue the motion here uh, this morning. So, but before we begin, um, I have been told repeatedly from both Mr. Jackson and Ms. Dianetti, and I do understand completely that Ms. Dianetti cannot be here today. He's certainly excused from being here today. Uh, but I was told that there would be a motion for egregious, a motion to dismiss based on egregious government misconduct. Uh, I had asked Ms. D, I was told that by both Mr. Jackson and Ms. Dianetti. Uh, I asked Ms. Dianetti how that motion to dismiss was any different than the motion for sanctions and um, motion to disqualify the district attorney's office. Um, he assured me that it was, in fact, different. He assured me that um, he would put in the body of the motion how it was different. And he assured me as recently as last week that that motion would be filed later that day. So that motion has not been filed. Um, that motion then is waived. So what we have today our two motions regarding Rule 14 obligations. So who's going to argue? Is it Ms. Yanetti or? I will be arguing. Okay, so I need you at a microphone. So I will hear you on the motion where you're looking for notes, reports, memoranda, and logs. Thank you. Your Honor, at the outset, I just want to note that as this court is aware, we have a motion pending before the court to disqualify the Norfolk DA's office from this case. Our position, therefore, is that the DA's office should not be participating in this case or arguing any motions, including this one. And I raise this issue just to alert the court that we are not waiving any objection to their continued involvement in the case. Okay, so I haven't decided that because I was waiting for the motion for egregious conduct, uh, motion for sanctions or motion to dismiss based on egregious governmental misconduct because I needed to be assured that that was different than the motion to disqualify. If I had known it was not coming, and maybe no intention of filing it, I would have decided that motion by now. Your Honor, there was a, it was a strategic decision okay. for us not to file that motion. It's not because it wasn't meritorious. It was a strategic decision All only. All right, you made representations that you were, therefore the other motion. I have not acted on that yet. I just want so, you to note the objection, please. Yeah, the objection's noted, so please move on to the merits yes, of your discovery request. I, absolutely. Your Honor, we're asking for material that fits squarely within the parameters of Rule 14. Statements were made to investigators in this case, including to Mr. Lally and to his staff, and in certain conversations, the state police were even present. Statements of witnesses are simply discoverable. Although they lodged general objections to each of our requests, and these were really boilerplate objections, the Norfolk DA's office appears to be arguing that these witness statements contained in their notes of their conversations, multiple conversations, are all work product. Neither this court nor we are in a position to judge whether the notes are strictly work product without actually seeing the notes. Work product is defined as legal research, opinions, theories, or conclusions. And to be clear, we are not interested in the Norfolk DA's office's opinions, theories, or conclusions. To, to the extent that these notes contain work product along with the statements, we are fine with the work product being redacted. 
We are not interested in their work product, but it is important for us to know whether their notes contain any statements of witnesses, and if they do, they should be turned over to us. Otherwise, discoverable material is not off limits simply because a prosecutor writes something in the margins of a document. That would give an attorney the power to keep otherwise discoverable materials out of the hands of a party who should legally be entitled to see the material. At a minimum, Your Honor, this court should order the Norfolk DA's office to disclose whether its notes contain any statements. They have not disclosed that. If the notes contain any witness statements and if the Norfolk DA's office is objecting to producing them to the defense, then this court, we're asking this court to have the DA's office produce those notes to the court so that this court can conduct an in-camera review of, those note, of their notes and evaluate whether they are truly all work product or whether there is in fact discoverable material contained therein Beyond that, Your Honor, we would rest on our motion and our brief. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lally, your response, please. Yes, sir. Sure. And Your Honor, I'll be brief. Um, so essentially what the defendant's motion uh, seeks is, is, and I would object to the mischaracterization of every single phone call or conversation with a witness as an interview with a witness, but um, I'm, I'm not even sure what half of these are referring to, as, as I don't recall any of those specific meetings occurring. Um, but if there were meetings, any meeting with a witness post-grand jury was in reference to uh, either harassment that they were sustaining as a result of, of actions of others in this case, or as a result of uh, a simple explanation as to Rule 17 motions that have been filed for individuals' phones or phone records or uh, other uh, third-party records that they were the subject of. It's a boilerplate response because it's a boilerplate uh, law that applies in this case uh, as far as uh, work product uh, that applies uh, to each and every one of the uh, requests with the exception of number eight of which the Commonwealth has uh, no objection to that. Explain to me how work product applies. Your Honor, work product applies uh, it, and specifically in reference to, uh, it, I mean, it's contained within, uh, and I would largely rest on the Commonwealth's motion, but it's contained within uh, what's cited as uh, Beng Xia Lang uh, in regard to uh, interview notes uh, in preparation of, of testimony is work product under the case law, under the rule of criminal procedure. Um, the uh, whatever notations uh, may be contained uh, within those. Um, but essentially, uh, these are not statements um, as are defined under Rule 14 um, from any of these uh, conversations uh, with witnesses. Uh, Rule 14 doesn't apply uh, to these statements, number one. But secondly, if there is uh, any content, uh, it's either already been uh, provided through the course of discovery, whether it be contained within a police report, grand jury minutes, uh, there's nothing different uh, than, than what has already been provided. And then secondly, uh, what the case law states and what Rule 14 states is that these types of conversations uh, uh, with witnesses, whether reduced to writing or not, um, you know, are within the ambit of, of the work product doctrine. All right, any response? You don't necessarily have to, but I just want to see if you want to. Um, I, w I would just say, Your Honor, their, their opposition to our motion does not even acknowledge whether there are statements or not statements. I just heard Mr. Lally say that there, in fact, are statements. So I am going to ask again that this court take those notes there and, and go through it and in camera and decide whether, in fact, all of it is work product or whether there exists within it um, discoverable materials with statements of witnesses, and I find it hard to believe that there wouldn't be any statements of witnesses concerning this case. Thank you. Do you want to respond at all? Your Honor, again, with reference to the, as they term them, interviews, but essentially phone calls with witnesses, these were in regard to explaining to them the Rule 17 process, explaining to them what counsel had filed, what types of records were being requested. Um, it was in large part me talking as far as explaining the law and things of that nature. There were not any statements related to the case or any um, testimony that was discussed or anything of that nature. 
Um, the one thing that I was referring to is there is one request that does deal with uh, a meeting which involves uh, preparation of a witness for grand jury, and whatever that witness uh, indicated in the course of that was testified to before the grand jury, and it's contained within the minutes and contained within uh, police reports of interviews uh, with that same witness. So there's, there's nothing to report. All right. All right, the next motion is the Commonwealth's motion for reciprocal discovery. But before we begin with that, Ms. Delali, could you tell me what reciprocal discovery has been provided to the Commonwealth at this point? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. All right, so trial is three weeks from today. Um, when did the Commonwealth um, provide its certificate uh, So the Commonwealth is un unable to file its certificate of compliance at this point. The one, I would say, sort of primary piece that we're waiting on is uh, there were two rounds of DNA testing that were done at the Bodie Lab in Virginia. One of those was completed. Um, that was in regard to uh, the defendant's taillight. Uh, that was finished, I think, first week of March, and council already has all of that. Uh, the second piece is in relation to uh, the hair from uh, the rear of the defendant's vehicle. Um, just for sort of review purposes, that was something that uh, had gone or undergone um, sort of typical DNA testing, which is autosomal DNA testing, which is taking um, the profile from, or attempting to uh, take the profile from the nucleus of the cell, um, and it relates to essentially both biological parents. That sample was of insufficient quality or quantity to generate a sample under the autosomal, uh, so we had asked, uh, and the court had ordered, uh, for the mitochondrial DNA testing, which goes to the maternal side uh, only, um, and the Bodhi Lab is able to do that. My latest update from that, it, and I say all that just to build up as to a sort of caveat as far as the, the testing is concerned. So the initial estimate as far as the testing was, uh, would put us several weeks out. Uh, we had asked that it be expedited. We had paid for it to be expedited. Uh, and the quickest that they can turn around report would be sometime in mid-April. Um, the caveat to that is whether or not there is a sufficient uh, quantity and quality for them to generate a mitochondrial DNA profile from the sample. That I should have an answer to, I was told, by the end of the month. So hopefully by the, either the end of this week or very early next week, um, because obviously if they aren't able to generate a mitochondrial DNA profile from the sample, then there's no reason to generate one from the victim and do a comparison. Uh, so that would sort of end it there, and then we would then be able to file the certificate of compliance. All right. Every other aspect of the case, though? Every other aspect of the case, uh, it, as I mentioned, there was a number eight in the defendant's motion to compel uh, that we should have uh, to them by the end of this week, if not earlier. Um, so every other aspect of the case, as far as discovery goes, uh, should, be, should be done from the Commonwealth's perspective. And that's the reason that I filed the motion, Your Honor, at this time, understanding that they're not obligated under the rules of criminal procedure to provide anything, but given that we have an April 16th trial date and I have nothing as far as any sort of reports or notice okay. of experts or testing or anything really at all, um, you know, I'd appreciate being able to, to get that, review that, or at least see it, you know, prior to the day we're impaneling. All right. What do you say, counsel? Your Honor, as you know, we do, we do not owe them any reciprocal discovery until they file a certificate of compliance, which has not been done. I mean, we have received, sorry, we have received hundreds of pages of, of documents. I mean, four days ago, we received uh, like 400 pages of documents we haven't gone through. Um, Council just handed us a thumb drive with, I don't know what's on this thumb drive, we have to go through that. So we haven't given any reciprocal discovery because we are not obligated to do so. Do you intend to call experts? Yes. In areas other than DNA? I'm going to have to defer to uh, Mr. Jackson who is on Zoom. All right, but counsel to arguing these motions was to be present here in court today. Right. Your Honor, the, if I can be heard for just a second on that issue, Mr. Lally made it very clear that given the fact that he was not in, in compliance with his discovery obligations, that this motion was not to be heard today. So this is sort of coming out of nowhere. Uh, no, no, no. The no, no, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So Mr. Lally doesn't decide what motions were to be argued. Today was for 
all non-evidentiary pretrial motions were to be argued. This was filed timely. This was on for today. If you feel that you cannot argue it, that's a different story. So you are muted. All right. Mr. Jackson, you're muted. I don't know how I got muted. Uh, yes, we are uh, intending to, to call experts, and there are going to be experts that, that are in areas other than DNA as well. But we haven't provided discovery because we don't even know what the 400 pages that we just, or 500 pages that we just got three or four days ago include, nor the discovery that was handed to us this morning. As soon as the, the Commonwealth gets finished with their compliance obligations, we will then comply with our discovery obligations. We have every intention of doing so, and we're hopefully prepared to do so. We're waiting on them. So once you get it from the Commonwealth, you can have it in a matter of a day or so, other than the DNA? Well, I don't know if I can do it in a day, but well, once you, we have you, you do know, if you're calling witnesses, you know who you're calling, correct? I have an idea who I'm calling, yes. All right, and you've engaged experts, so you've been working with experts, so you should have all that information ready to disclose, correct? We're in, in the process of getting those decisions finalized, yes, but some of them are gonna be predicated on what the, the, the Commonwealth discovery and the, the totality of the Commonwealth discovery looks like. No, I mean, I, that's their obligation. No, I understand. All right, but you will be calling witnesses and you will be calling expert witnesses? Absolutely. All right. What is your estimate as to how long this case will take to try? I assume if the, if the Commonwealth case, I'm just throwing a, a dart at a dartboard, but based on what I know, if the Commonwealth case takes three to four weeks, I think our case would probably take two weeks. Okay. All right. Mr. Lally, I suggest that you get that information as soon as possible. Um, it could be that I strike it but um, I would hear from the defense on that as well, but at least find out if they're able to do the testing. Yeah, sure. All right. All right, thank you. You have your next date, we'll see you then. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Okay. All right, please. All right, please. Goodbye. Thanks, man. Uh, so quick and easy, huh? Yeah. Not too exciting. Interesting. Some moments, yeah. No. But I don't know. I mean, they've been messing around with defense all through this, so I can, you know, he's just like, we can't do this until we have the stuff. They, they do that all the time. They hit him with like hundreds of pages of. Incomprehensible gibberish. Right. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. 
listen to the different stories. Now. This is a lot of words. It's very hard to follow. Thank you. These guys are crystal clear. Bye. Bye. Uh, <clears throat>